the last man to do it, David Cohn, back in July of 1999. And our colleague, Coney, joins us now. And, Coney, as you were watching this game, Jack mentioned it, fourth or fifth inning, you might not be thinking no-hitter, but you could see the stuff was special enough to get the job done. Yes, not only was it special enough, his pitch count was in order, really, the whole way. He was in complete control. And, you know, I thought Jack really just hit on every point. You know, I couldn't agree more with what Jack said. But, you know, when you've got that good of a curveball in your back pocket and you can drop it over for strikes anytime you want, you know, that's what it looked like with Corey Kluber tonight. I mean, 12 times he got called strikes with that curveball. And that, that's a what a weapon to have. Uh, you know, and he, you, don't, you don't always have to paint with your fastball. You don't always have to get ahead with your fastball. If you need to get a strike anytime, anywhere, you drop that curveball over. David, he told Meredith after the game that he started thinking about his no-hitter around the sixth inning. You've been in that position. You know what it is like. What are the nerves like? How can you focus just on getting a strike, getting it out, moving forward so that you can reach that historic moment? Yeah, I mean, all the spectrum of emotions. I mean, really controlling your adrenaline rush because it, it, invariably you're going you're gonna to be uh, you know, in, involved in that kind of a rush to where you got to control your emotions a little bit. And, but at the same time, you know, he's such a veteran and he's been through so much that you add the element of the injuries he's been through. He really hasn't pitched a full game in almost two years, it seems like. So, you know, this was the Cy Young Corey Kluber. This was the flashback. Kind of, you know, uh, you know, the, the kind of pitcher that everybody knew when he was one of the best pitchers in the game, you know, arguably in the top five in the game for a five year period. Uh, this looked exactly like that darting movement, uh, tremendous control. That's the thing about Kluber. He's like Roy Halladay was. He's a tremendous combination of movement and precision and throwing the ball exactly where he's trying to throw it. And that's what happened tonight. You know, it's interesting. You said he kind of tapped into the Corey Kluber of the past. A an interview he did in the past couple days, he said, well, I'm not that guy. I pitch differently now. I'm a different kind of pitcher. But he really did seem to channel that. And, Coney, I want to ask you, with, with Corey Kluber tonight, you saw the postgame interview with Meredith, so stoic, you'd never know that he actually pitched a no-hitter. But that's the kind of demeanor at times you probably need to get through those 27 outs. Yes, you know, he expects to pitch well, and he's pitched so well for the, the better part of his career that, you know, why wouldn't he think that way? Why wouldn't he think, you know what? I know what to do with it when I have good stuff. When I come out of that bullpen and, oh, oh yeah, oh, my, my curveball is really breaking. Oh, I've got exceptional control. Hey, this, this, this is like riding a bike. It all comes right back to him. The Cy Young Corey Kluber showed up again tonight, and he knew exactly what to do. You know, if your arm feels good and your stuff is good, the swings don't lie. And his stuff didn't lie, and he knew exactly what to do with it. David, across his last five starts, batters are 3 for 30 against his changeup. That includes 0 for 7 tonight. I talked about how he started to throw it more in the later innings. Is that Higashioka? Is that Kluber? Is that a combination of both? Why do you think they went heavier to the changeup late in the game? You know, you know what I think? I think it's Garrett Cole. I think the, the success that Gary Cole has had with his changeup and the unpredictability that that brings to your repertoire, you know, I, I think you almost learn by a osmosis. I think both of those pitchers have seen how much success you could have if you incorporate that changeup and how much pressure that can take off of your curveball or your fastball, and especially if used in the right sequencing. If you sequence your changeup in at the right times, boy, that is a devastating weapon. And, you know, I, I give uh, Garrett Cole credit for leading the way. And certainly, Jack, you're right, Higashioka leading the way and, and Corey Kluber having the open-mindedness to, to use it in big spots and to understand the importance of incorporating that changeup in it at the right place at the right time with the right sequencing. Well, I'm glad you brought up Garrett Cole because when the season began with starting pitching for the Yankees, it was Garrett Cole and everybody else. Corey Kluber started to find some things and find himself and get better command. And we've seen that over the last five starts culminating in the no-hitter tonight. And I just wonder, with Kluber, do you see a bona fide number two now where you say he is who he is? He's that guy that can back up Garrett Cole in a big spot and in the playoffs. Well, you know, you know, Bob, it's a great question. It's a fair question, uh, and everybody's thinking the same thing right now. So let's look under the hood. You know, and in baseball nowadays, we have the tools to look under the hood. Okay, let's look at his spin rate. 
Let's look at the vertical break on a slider and the curveball. Let's look at all the inside numbers. They're all up. They're all sort of matching his, his Cy Young years. That's why I brought it up before. You know, you see the eye test. Yeah, the eye test. He certainly passed that with flying colors. He made history tonight. How about the other stuff under the hood? That's that's passing the test as well. And I can tell you this, his spin rate was off the chart on that curveball. Uh, they're in line. All of his inside numbers are in line to, to the peak of his career right now. At least tonight it was. David, there have been more than 300 no-hitters in Major League history. This is already the sixth of this season. We did a segment on our pregame where we talked about no-hitters, and some folks want to devalue them. I'm not one of those people. I watched the way he pitched tonight. That wasn't about offense being down. That was about Kluber dominating an offense. I wonder your thoughts about so many no-hitters so early into this season. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the ebbs and flows of the baseball game, right? We're all figuring it out as we go. Pitchers are ahead of the game right now. Uh, the, the pitching laboratories, the gas stations, the biomechanics that are being studied, the sequencing, uh, the pitchers are ahead of the game right now. And uh, we haven't even got into the composition of the baseball. Is the baseball moving more? Is there something different about the baseballs? Uh, we understand how seams make the baseball move much more than ever before, and pitchers understand that. We have scientists all over the country studying the spin of baseballs and studying it in laboratories and learning about it, and learning how different grips make baseballs move, and the pitchers understand this better than ever before in the history of the game. I've seen moving pitches, not just velocity, the sequence, the, 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 everything that's behind the pitch, the purpose of every pitch is, is better than it's ever been. It's certainly that I've seen in this game. And you know me, I'm a fan of pitching. I've seen some of the best pitching I've ever seen in my life going on right now, right here. And having said all of that, and I know you're deep into the analytics and the spin rates and that sort of thing, but I marvel at the fact that it comes down to a guy who believes in his stuff, working with a catcher. It's a human element. You throw out all the analytics. I know it's all swirling around out there, Coney, but it's a pitcher and a catcher in perfect harmony getting a no-hitter. It's undeniable, Bob, and well said on your part. I mean, it really does come down to that. It's a rhythm and a sequence to everything. And if you have great rhythm and you're in timing and emotionally you're in sync with your catcher, everything else just falls into place. You don't have to think about where your hands are. You don't have to think about your grip. You don't have to think about your release point. If that all happens naturally without thinking about it because your mind is free and you're in sync with your catcher. And you're not having to worry about selection process. You're just worrying about executing the pitch, throwing it where you're trying to throw it. And that's what Corey Kluber did tonight. I don't think I saw him shake his head at all in terms of, no, I don't want to throw that pitch. He just did it every single, single time with tremendous tempo and tremendous mechanics and tremendous precision. Well, Yankees fans and baseball fans got to see something really special tonight. Coney, thanks for helping us break it down. We'll let you go, but we will continue our coverage now on the postgame with much more on Kluber and Jack. I just want to go back to what you 